Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a guy I haven't seen for at least, what, 20 years, you figure? I would say at least 20, yeah. Well, let me see. Yep. I, I left that morning show. When, right. So it would be 95, maybe? 96, uh, 97, 97. 97. So 97. 97. 100. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, 7. 17. 100. This is getting to be like 26 years. Jesus. No, that's, years. Not ha- that's not happening anymore. Yeah. Now we will not allow that. No, we will not allow that. <laughs> no. Uh, even if you are, where are you c- calling us from? I, I I am about fifty miles from Reno. Fifty miles from Reno. Let me do something here. I got to do something quickly because I sure. got to close this door, which I left open. I figured you just run into the bathroom. We've got a. Um, oh, um, we got the cleaning woman in today. And uh, she's using the vacuum cleaner in the other rooms. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, uh, I was outside Reno. Oh, you were in Harlem. I'm in Harlem. So you're outside of Reno. You're in what? What city? Fallon. Fallon. It's a. Uh, it's where the Top Gun uh, base is. So, a lot of practicing bombings and things well, like. First that. of all, before we go any further, okay, um, how did you? wind up in Fallon? Well, I retired from, you know, doing whatever. And my mother lives out here. So I came out there to kind of, you know, keep an eye on them as we get older. Mm -hmm. That kind of vision. Yeah. There was nobody else to do that. Yeah. You you know, so that's where I'm at. Yeah. And that's kind of what I do. You know, you got to keep an eye on people as they get older. You want to yeah, you know, be around them more, things like that. Oh well, then so, you should move out here and take care of me. I know, I know. Well, that's, it was either <laughs> Alex. It was either her or you. Let me so, ask. Let yeah. me ask you. How old? How old? And, how old is your mother? I was going to say you're exactly the same age. Eighty three. Yeah, yeah. So I could date. So, I could date her. You could, <laughs> but you know, she uh, married a guy I went to high school with, so can't have that. Yeah. Are you married, by the way? Uh, yeah, I got somebody around the house here. <laughs> well, it's somebody, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around the house. Not here now, but yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, so we haven't seen each other in like 20, uh, what it's I It's a long time. 20, 27 years. I don't know. It's forever. It's forever. And we had a falling out at one point. We won't go into that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so we didn't talk to each other for 27 years. Years. Yeah. We we decided to not talk. And and strangely enough, I had a falling out with my father that lasted about that long, too. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah. But I mean, what happens is, is that you you have falling out with people. And then all of a sudden, one day, when you finally see them 20 years later, I had a friend, Bruce David, who worked down at Hustler. And and I, I didn't, I never, he thought he was, I was mad at him. Right. And I thought he was mad at me. So we didn't talk to each other for like 20 years. Right. And then all of a sudden when we got together, we realized we couldn't remember why we didn't talk to each other for 20 years. Uh, I, you know, over the years, I have, uh, people ask me about him all the time. And and we have we have a lot of mutual friends. Yeah. And they go, you know, you two need to to, to get back together. Yeah, you two need to talk. Yeah, and I'm like, well, I don't know, I, I, you know, I'm not sure, and it went on and on and on, and then I started saying, you know, I can't handle this anymore. <laughs> I don't. I, I, yeah, either I need to call the guy. Yeah, and he needs to tell me that you know, we can never speak ever again because you know whatever. Yeah, and then I'll know, or. 
I keep having these warm and fuzzy feelings, and I, I think I need to make that call. Well, I've learned at my age, you only nurse a grudge so far, and that so far is when that nursing that grudge is hurting your nipples. You right, know, right, uh, <laughs> or 27 years. Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> it, it just gets ridiculous after a while, and, and you know, I, I can somewhat remember why we had a falling out, but it doesn't matter at this point in my life. No, it doesn't, and I, you know, and I even would like to take full blame for the whole thing. <laughs> and uh, just because, and it had nothing to do with the radio show or anything else. It was no, no, no. It was personal stuff. It was a personal thing, and it was just, it, yeah. You know, like yeah. I said, we don't need to talk about it. It's gone. It's dissipated, and um, you know, we uh, we've been talking yeah. for a few weeks now, and uh, I'm sure what's going to happen at this point is well, all these people, because I haven't said a word to anybody, are going to go. Yeah. Oh my God! You two are talking. What? Yeah. yeah. When did this happen? How well, now happen? let's set up. Let it set up what you did for me on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, I always used to describe you when they said, "What is Chuck's job exactly?" And I said, "Oh, he's he's the, our stunt guy." Right. You know, because you would but, go out and do things. You know, do little right. stunts. I'm uh, give give him a, a a couple of examples. Well, the weird. The weird part of the whole thing was I was at the, how it all started, I was at Lollapalooza and I had this booth and I was selling human remains. And Yes, that guys, was it. That was it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And your guy. And what, what by, was you? You were selling human remains? Yeah. Fingers and toe bones. Jewelry. Uh, oh, you okay. This was, was, this was dead people jewelry. Right, right, right. Yeah. It was a cannibal wear because everybody's dying to look cool. That was my thing. <laughs> and it was, I don't know, Curtis and Cynthia D or somebody came by and they were looking for somebody to interview and they shoved a microphone in my face and, and you, we talked for a couple of minutes and then an hour later I get this call going, hey, on this was Friday, on, on Monday, can you come into the studio? And I was like, for what? Didn't we just have an interview? And and she goes, no, no, we'd like you, Alex would like you to come in the studio. Okay, whatever. I go up there, you and I have a chat, and apparently somebody saw something between the two of us. And Thursday, of the, I came in to do my little thing, and, and Thursday I get this other call going, hey, can you come in again? And I'm like, now we've done the jewelry thing twice. What are right. we going to do? Right. And she goes, no, you're just going to sit there. And that was the beginning of the nightmare. The, the, I guess. Wait a minute, the nightmare? <laughs> the nightmare you call you, working? You and I. Wait a minute. You, you and I. Working for me was a nightmare. Well, I'll see you in not, another 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. No, it was, it was the weirdest, um, most entertaining thing I think I've ever done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I and we really had fun together. Yeah. Out outside the studio, inside the studio, vacations. Mm -hmm. We had some amazing vacations. Yeah, yeah. So it, it what happened was is that Chuck um, um, was a kind of a stunt guy. I, that's the way I can yeah. best explain it. And he would yeah. go out and do stuff. And I never asked you basically what you were going to do, or I was given a brief description of what you were going to do so right that, so that it would seem kind of uh new to me in other words right i, I didn't sure. i if i didn't know what was going on i would then react to it in the way an audience member would react to it right so, and it describes some of the things you did well we we uh, we tried on mondays we kind of fell into it going down to uh, City Hall and waiting for people to get let out of the drunk tank. So it was all hookers and weirdos. <laughs> I don't even remember and, that. But. Oh, yeah, and, we, and we, we called it, we called it, why are you here? And that was the only question, yeah. why are you here? And you did it, and you they, did this by, uh, how do we do this, by phone, right? Phone, right. We had that phone with a microphone hooked to it. Yeah. A yeah. bag phone, old bag phone yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And we found that people will literally walk out of jail and t and confess to everything, <laughs> everything at all. It, it was so fun. Yeah. And it, it didn't matter. And they were like, oh, sure, we'll tell you, blah, 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 blah. 
they'll go at it. And, uh, I didn't even remember that, but what a great idea that was. It, it was you wonderful. Know. You know, people, if you come up to them with a microphone, will say just about Is anything. there a certain time where they let everybody every day out of the drunk tank? It worked out well for us, 7 a.m. <laughs> 7 a.m., wow, wow. And and then you started getting into doing weirder stuff. Yeah, well, now you got to remember to begin with to begin with Chuck at least in those days, and it looks like he still is. Was a rather a per person with a, a decent amount of girth. I got more than that now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so for him to stand out in say the middle of the street, almost naked, is not exactly a sight. For sore eye, or it makes an eye sore, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, we we learned early on that fat guy naked, always funny. Yeah, well, but what always. you did, what you did, you used it not, not only as a prop, but you used it as part of what you were doing. Like, for instance, you would slather yourself with peanut butter. Right. And then hand out crackers to people to scoop the peanut butter off of you and eat it. Right, and we never thought anybody would, would do it. Matter of fact, initially, I wasn't even the guy to do it. We went around the studio trying to get somebody to do it, and finally the producer goes, nobody wants to do this, Chuck. And I go, okay, I'll go do it. Yeah. And so we did, and it turns out that people will eat off of Fat Guy. <laughs> who's not wearing much clothes. Well, speak for yourself. Uh, lots, lots of them. Not just like it happened once, you know. Yeah. It wasn't some random homeless guy. It was like listeners would come down and eat off me. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. And, cool. and and it got even weirder. At one point, Chevy's, I think, hired me to become a buffet at the restaurant. Yes, they slathered you with, what, salsa? and, uh, and Yeah. Uh, yeah. They made me a, a giant burrito. <laughs> And you just start shaking your head. It's like, are you sure this is entertainment? I'm not sure, right? I, One bad idea after another. I, so it got, there was a the point at which I started, I think, feel uncomfortable with some of it. You know? Really? Well, I, I, just, I went, you know, is this what my show business life has come to? Sending a guy out into the street with peanut butter all over his body? You know? Yeah, I was confused by the whole thing myself, yeah. but... But you became People, you became part of the cast of the yeah. show. You were yeah. there. You were there every morning, weren't you? I was there every morning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we we started out talking like kind of like we are now, and then I'd go out in the road and, you know, <laughs> cause some kind of havoc somewhere. You really, really, yeah. Yeah, we did. Uh, well, I, I can remember a nice thing we did where uh, where it cost so much money to get across the Golden Gate Bridge that if you had two people in the car, it was free. So I'd go out there and stand until somebody needed a ride across the bridge, and then they they get to go for free, and we'd interview them in the car as we went across the bridge. Uh huh. Yeah. And those yeah. those worked really well as well. And then I'd hike myself back over to the other side of the bridge and uh, Do start it, over again. St start over again. So I mean, it, it, the stuff you did was was very inventive. And, and it was it, a, a different. It, hmm. <laughs> I said it was different. Did you put that? Did you put that video compilation up on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Is it there? What yeah, What is it there. under? Just put put in Chuck mm -hmm. Farnham. Yeah, I think that's what you have to do. And it's a bunch of things showing exactly the things we're talking about. And one of the things that was there, and the one that got us in the most trouble. Do you remember what it was? Uh, well, I I think she left the country because of it. <laughs> <laughs> We hated Danielle Steele. Yeah. With a passion yeah. because her, her books were so badly written and they were so cheap. But she was making a fortune, so much so that she bought the old Spreckles Mansion, which is. The, uh, uh, if anybody yeah, wants to see the Spreckles Mansion, go watch the movie Pal Joey. That's supposedly the home of the woman in Pal Joey. Okay? Wow. Huge home. And yeah. she was just, I don't know, what could we call it? Uh, she was just a piece of work. I don't know. Just creepy. The whole thing was just bizarre. Yeah. She's writing these books that you and I couldn't care less about. Yeah. They were just not good. Mm -hmm. And she's been raking in the cash. 
living in the mansion and we just kept getting more upset every day about it. What happened is I noticed, okay, I noticed that uh, uh, she, she wrote this one book, I'm trying to remember the name of it now, and I was in a book club with Penn and Teller. And what we would do is we would take lousy books like that, read them, and then discuss them with each other on this little bulletin board that we had. Okay. Nice. So uh, we did this thing, and it, um, um, it wasn't bad, actually, to read and then talk about because it was so terrible that we had a lot to talk about, you know, make jokes about and so right. on. And what I noticed was in the first <clears throat> chapter, she's got a 14-year-old girl having sex with a stable boy. And I said, isn't this kitty porn? You know, right. but she wasn't kitty porn. She was Danielle Steele. Right. So what we decided to do was to send you out <clears throat> Opposite the Spreckles Mansion, there's a park. Yes, there is. And we sent you out there with a big inflatable rubber doll. Yeah. Okay. And as I uh, on the air, I was reading from Daniel Steele book, this book. Well, and well, you, I was having... yeah, and you were, uh, how could we put it, demonstrating the book. Yeah, I was having sex with a doll in the park. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was doing. And and. and uh, uh, I think Tony Kameen was there. I mm -hmm. think um, uh, we, you sent the lawyer with me. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Fred Reamer. <laughs> Reamer was there. Yeah, yeah. And well, it started out with two days before that when we kept talking about it. Uh, Danielle's lawyers kept calling the station. Yes. Going, don't, don't, whatever you're thinking about, no. Don't yeah. do this. <laughs> and you and I are sitting around going, she keeps saying no. Well, well, that's not good. Well, we that's a... that's the, when we hear no. When we hear no from Daniel Steele, that's like hearing the word yes. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> well, well, we didn't know what we were gonna do, but here, let's allow me to think about it for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, we'll get back to you on this. Uh, by the way, oh, hey, the show's yeah. it's not ten o'clock. The show's over with. We're not gonna do it anymore today. Yeah, yeah. But so anyway, tomorrow, they, you know. They, yeah, anyway, we had our lawyer. I had my lawyer. My lawyer was yeah. Fred Reamer. Uh, yep. Which is a great name for a lawyer, I always say. You know, before that, I had a lawyer named Mister Turtle. That didn't work, but Mister <laughs> Reamer really worked. Reamer, you know, uh, he's a good guy. Yeah, he was a great guy. He died, you know. No. Oh yeah, a couple many years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah, I knew he, he was just he had, ran a, for had, office. A, had a heart attack and died. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, so so so, oh, so uh, yeah. steel. So we had, there was this constant back and forth with Steele and her lawyers calling the studio and the office and talking to the general manager and so on. Now, you want me to tell you a story you don't know? Mm. Uh, I had a guy who worked for me as a bodyguard. Uh, right. Mainly because on a couple of occasions when I was out of things, there were problems. Also, right. when we did a show like one of our uh, comedy shows, Usually we got paid in cash and we had to take get it to the bank. And uh, this guy, my bodyguard, took the money and went to the bank. And he had a gun in case somebody tried to hold him up. Okay. Right. So anyway, um, he was also Danielle Steele's bodyguard. Oh, nice. And the thing that he had that was <laughs> terrific okay, this is uh, the best part of the story, was that he had her credit card. Nice. And he could use the credit card, if he needed to, sure. to take care of stuff and whatever. So he said, I know you're having trouble with Daniel Steele. Let me take you out to dinner tonight. Uh, on Danielle. <laughs> Jesus. And we're sitting there having a meal. Hey, another <clears throat> bottle of wine, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah in, the I, middle uh, of all, in the middle of all of that. And also, he was my inside person to know what was happening with Danielle and her daughter during this whole thing. Right. Because she said to her daughter, this was according to my friend the bodyguard, because he was there. The daughter said, she said to the daughter, he says that I'm a child pornographer, that I have 14-year-olds having sex with uh, 
people in, in older people in the in in my book, and the daughter looked at her and went, "You do, <laughs> mom, yeah. you do," because the daughter was a fan of the show, yeah, and hated yeah. what her mother was doing to us. Well, we figured we figured when we got there, we had ten minutes before the cops were coming. Yeah. So we had to do our thing. But you weren't doing anything obscene. You were only pretending to fuck a a uh, blow oh, up oh, doll on a bench. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it in theory it looked really, really good, and and visually it looked really, really good because people started driving by and yeah. honking. But yeah. then we found out that there was thirty five cop cars on their way to the <laughs> field house. <laughs> Because he decided because it was I mean, Dan, it was Daniel Steele. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. So we're like, okay, we got to get out of here. So we throw the doll and Reamer and everybody else in the car, and we didn't know which way to go. We knew the cops were coming one way. They obviously knew what my car looked like. So we went the other way, and the cops missed us entirely. Wow. So we we got away with the whole thing. Now the problem is. Well, Probably luckily, luckily we had a lawyer with you, so that in case right. anything happened, he would intervene, and then right, and then of course I, afterwards he would send me the bill. But right. <laughs> you know, well, you know, somebody's got to pay. Well, I had, but, I had, I it, had uh, uh, screw you money in those days, anyway. So yeah, it, 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 everything worked well, and then, uh, you know, we got in trouble enough times where the cops were definitely involved at the station. Hey, we need to speak to you, kind of a thing. Did you do? Did you do this? And you know, I play the. Oh, I don't really know. It's theater of the mind. I I don't know. And sometimes we go out and people go, "Well, you're not really going to do that, are you?" And I go, "I'm not an actor. I don't know how to do this." Yeah, I'm going to run naked down the street. I mean, yeah, people are naked all the time. But anyway, two years later, I'm watching Larry King, and Danielle Steele's on, and she and he's like, "You've lived a long life, Danielle." Uh, What's some of the trouble you've had? The next thing you know, I hear about a guy having sex in a park across the street from our house and a guy on the radio uh, doing a play-by-play. <laughs> you know, I'm Larry King, and I'm just like, oh, my God, he hasn't gotten over this yet. <laughs> it's not good. Danielle still hates us. Yeah. And then she, I, she I, I, mean, I'm, I never heard the story of her doing it on Larry King. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She clearly, I got, I got many calls going. Hey, I'm pretty sure Daniel was talking about you on TV. And yeah. I go, somebody having sex in front of her house? Uh, yeah, well, that was me. All right. Yeah, well, uh, we survived. Yeah, and that, that, that's a good example of how he was our stunt guy. Yeah, you know? I mean, you were up for almost anything. Yeah, I didn't really. <laughs> I I think I have a line somewhere, but you, you know, you were around me enough to know that. My line in the sand is a little fuzzy. You know, I will, well, hey, we're on, it's the anniversary, dude. The anniversary of us uh, getting naked on the Golden Gate Bridge for Easter. I don't remember that one. Yeah, no, we... Uh, I mean, I don't look. That whole I, played period... the, I, 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 played, um, I played Jesus born prematurely because we didn't work on the weekend, so it was Good Friday. So I was out there covered in ketchup, walking up and down the bridge. <laughs> was that supposed to represent the blood of Jesus? So, yeah, exactly. God, I'm, I'm just, and uh, you know, you know what happens when you do stuff like that on the bridge? You get a long conversation with the psychiatrist. Oh, really? Oh, they have the bridge psychiatrist. He's right. He has an office. The cops come out and get you. And take you to talk to the psychiatrist. Well, listen, we're starting to run out of time. We're going to run out of time in about an oh, hour no. and a half here. So what I want to do is we'll just do another one of these immediately after we do this one. Because i got sure. so much stuff to cover. So anyway, and then I'll run that next week. Okay. okay. But anyway, so, you know, Chuck, uh, Chuck was uh, an embarrassment to us. Uh, exactly. But the kind of embarrassment that my show enjoyed. Yeah, I mean... Uh, uh, I think everybody who knows me, at one point or another, and, uh, you know, is, is embarrassed by whatever they brought into to, to a well, dinner. Well, I, I always, I, as I said earlier, I always felt I had a certain sense of dignity. 
you know, like my show has a yeah. purpose, you know, and then finally Better. it evol devolves into this, and I go, oh, what the hell? <laughs> it works. Have fun with it, you know. It certainly worked well. Yeah, yeah. I think. He was our stunt guy. Anyway, let me let me let's uh, stop here, and we'll right. start up and do another one, and uh, talk to you again uh, for the audience next week. Okay. okay. All right, sir. Thank you very much, Chuck. Thank you, buddy. Chuck Farnham, ladies and gentlemen. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Mm, yes. Okay. How about that, folks? For those of us, for those of you who are old fans of my San Francisco show, I'm um, just doing a few things here of my San Francisco show, you probably remember Chuck Farnham, right? Right. You remember Chuck Farnham. So uh, we'll have another interview with him next week, next Wednesday. So <clears throat> join us for that. We did about, uh, what, three of them total, I think. So that'll be on for ne the next two weeks, okay? And then we may bring him back some more. But anyway, it, it's great to talk to him after all these years. And on the next episode, I think maybe we talk about why we haven't talked to each other for about 25 years. But we'll get into that. Uh, gee, we don't have a lot of people waiting on here tonight. So, but I'll I'll do it anyway. Let's uh, let's see here. Let's uh, let's go to there's Jeff, and uh, there's Charlie Wallace. Okay, all right. Okay, well that's our. That's our group for tonight. How are y'all? Doing pretty good. Let's see here. It, well, I, wait a minute. I'm in it just for the cash. IT. IT. Oh, IT. it. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. All right. Information technology. Yeah. I'm in it. Uh, yeah. I'm just in it for the cash. Just in it for the cash. I love it. I love it. Charlie. I, 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 Jeff's got an audio up there somewhere. Right. Yeah. Are Jeff, just kill your browser. Just turn off your browser. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Just get rid of the browser. Oh, there, I think you got it. No? No, you didn't get it. Wait a minute. Did you get it? Okay. There we go. Okay. Hey, everybody. How are you? Doing good. Doing. I got to get rid of this background. Yeah. Why? So they have a shrink on the bridge just for people to go out and do st stupid stuff. They had a what? What? I thought Chuck said that there was a shrink uh, on the bridge. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know they had a shrink. Probably to talk people out of jumping. Yeah. 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 Um. Uh, did you know that uh, you were in the pol with the police and so on? Uh, yeah. No, you didn't know it. No, I didn't know they, that they had that on the bridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were they hated me. That bridge. <laughs> I'll bet. That I'll bridge bet. hated you. <laughs> well, because I, I they kept trying to keep me from knowing when the next person was when the left you know the two thousandth person was going to jump. Oh God. And uh, I. Uh, Every every day that somebody jumped, I said another one jumped last night, and they couldn't figure out how I knew. But what was <laughs> happening? I had people from the Coast Guard calling me, telling oh, really? me they were all on my side, right? That's funny. So they they did that, and uh, uh, finally, when the two thousandth happened, I announced it, and the bridge people said, "No, absolutely, the two thousandth hadn't jumped." And then they finally had to admit that he had, and I was <laughs> spot on. Yeah, right on. But he didn't win the blender. He didn't win the blender. No, he right. didn't win the blender. Well, his family didn't win the blender. I said that I would give a blender to whoever was the 2,000th, but then oh. I decided because he drove to the middle of the bridge and then got out and jumped and caused traffic to be impeded by that, I considered him an inconsiderate son of a bitch and uh, who deserved to die, and I didn't give him the blender. Oh. You should have gave him a waffle iron so the family could, because when he hit the water, he probably flattened out. <laughs> yeah, I would say he did. Absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, that was the, uh, that was the, uh, 
stories. Uh, and then, there are more little stories we tell on future episodes. Do you remember him? Uh, no, you you don't even remember don't. me on the air. And, I I don't. The only play, I saw you. I saw you and and another guy holding each other's shirts and stuff on the side of buses and billboards and crap. No, and no, other than that, I, no, I, don't, that, I probably that, didn't that, listen to your show much. That wasn't a billboard. What was it? There that, were that signs was, on the no, side the, of buses. There, there were signs of me, but there, right. no, but the, but that the, the the two of us grabbing each other was the cover of the. Uh, Sunday Chronicle magazine, oh, Image magazine. You know, that was Forty years ago, you expect me to remember that? Well, yeah. I do. Oh, well, that's good. You got a better memory than Phil. Yeah. I mean, than I do. Well, Phil, Phil, do you remember any of this? Uh, yeah, I was having trouble getting on there for a second. Uh, you mean the? Uh, I don't remember the antics or Chuck Farnham, uh, but no, uh, we're talking about. So you never paid it? attention to my. Sh you know what you didn't? You never paid attention to my show once I went to Live One Hundred Five. No, I didn't. <laughs> you see? Okay. Yeah. So Terry McGovern, wasn't I, he the one that you were face to face with? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the, so it, I remembered it, something. The, the title of it was Radio Wars. The cover. Yeah. 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 One I, radio station versus another. Yeah. I I'd, yeah. I'd bring it up right now, but I I it would take me forever to do it and I don't want to waste the time to do it. So there we go. Yeah. So how are all of you doing? Good. Yeah. Good to see you all. Good to have all of you here. Um, just feeling old. Just feeling old? What's making you uh, feel old today? My son had his 35th birthday today. <laughs> oh, boy. That makes uh -oh. you feel... That, you see, and I wouldn't know that. That's why I didn't have any kids, because then I couldn't feel old. Charlie, I thought you were 29. <laughs> <laughs> Only in my mind. <laughs> Only oh, in your mind. Maybe in Phil's mind, too. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got a, I got a nice gift from Tony. Oh. A comic book? A Trump pen. <laughs> oh, I thought it was oh, is a that one of the ones pencil. where you pull the head up and it plays for you? Listen to this. I will be greatest president that God ever created. <laughs> and you think that pen is a positive pen for Trump? Yeah. Yeah, wait, wait a minute. Look, I'm rich. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? He, I'm rich. Says, look, I'm really rich. Yeah. Amazing. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Believe me, that is not a nice pen. No, well, it's better than a chatty Kathy, you know. No, chatty Kathy doesn't lie. <laughs> and you have to, and you don't tap the head on a chatty Kathy. You got to pull oh. <laughs> pull the string. What do you think of the pen, uh, the, uh, Tony? Since you sent it, I think it's it's the perfect gift. <laughs> yeah, but do you think it's meant as a joke? Or no, do you, or, or do you think well, it, I don't know. He gave oh, a diabetic yeah. uh, a, a chocolate bunny. Oh, yeah, I gave him a candy, really, actually. If he didn't want I was going to say pass it to Alan. But he gave it to Faye, but little do they know I laced it with something. So please, don't let Faye eat it, uh, Phil. I'm joking. I had so much candy in this house. I said, Phil, you know what it was, Alex? I'm not going to pay $9 to ship a pen out. Who I sent him coffee? Who sent him coffee? It was Actually, I had a cup downstairs. No, I, okay. I got to get my cup. Anyway. No, 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 I go get it. Go get it. They, I, go get it. it. I no, made folders, no. Alex. I went to your favorite store, Costco. I'll be right. Oh, boy. Jeez. Oh, my. Not me. I didn't do it. It's not my That's fault. That's coffee, right? I would say Either so. that or our boy is now doing cocaine. One yeah, or the well, other. I, I think that he tainted the chocolate with meth. In which case, Phil would be used to that because he's a, a, a meth user. He's a sorry meth. Uh, sorry meth, yeah, there you go. Sorry meth, yeah, sorry meth. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Boy, I'm coughing tonight. We have pollen. The pollen count today out of uh, 12 is the top, right? Something and like it that. was 11.9 today. Yeah, stay indoors, close oh. the windows. Mm-hmm. However, my wife on a warm day likes to open the windows. <laughs> Oops. Whoops. Go for a walk. Out here lately. Huh? 
It's been warm out here lately. Yeah, and was, the pollen's been flowing in the Bay Area, too. We had 45 degrees today. Yeah. I had to put some makeup on the top of my head. I don't know if you can see it here, but I was shaving the top of my head, and I got nicked by the razor. Ouch. You don't really get nicked by razors anymore. Not when they have five blades. Yeah. yeah right. There you go. Well, I got nicked. And so I get this. How about using, there. if you do your head every day, you can use an electric razor, can't you? Uh, what? If you did it, I have a friend of mine that shaves his head. And he went to an electric razor, and he just does it every day. He just does, goes over his head. Mm -hmm. and well, you no, see, no I, I shave, I shave in the in the uh, in the shower. Oh, okay. And if I can't use an electric razor, uh, this, well, they they well, I have a battery powered. They, you know, they make an electric ones. razor in the Relco that you can use in the in in a shower. Mine mine is one of those. I was just starting right. to say mm -hmm. that, but usual phil well, i'd out. rather interrupt you alan it's okay phil it's Listen where you feel listen. loved nobody listens to you anyhow so it's okay yeah 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 mm. so anyway so um let me see here was there anything in the news uh, yeah those two uh legislatures down in tennessee are both reinstated the, yeah, yeah the legislators yeah yeah they're both the Republicans the were uh, didn't want to didn't out want. by the Republican majority. What they did is the the Republican minority or majority stayed away, and so the Democrats then reinstated them while they were away. Mm -hmm. they, they had sixty-two votes and no, no, no negative. There were sixty-two yes right. and right. No, so I don't know what the amount of well, it's just another case of the Republicans trying to ruin democracy, you know. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So. Well, these these uh, these two legislators, both of both of them, their first, first names were Justin, which I think is kind of interesting. Oh, really? And both they were Justin? reinstated temporarily. They were reinstated temporarily by the city council in the district that from which they had been elected. They both will now have to stand for a special election in order to win a full term again. You don't think they're going to win? I, I wouldn't. Oh, I think they will. Oh, I think they will. Absolutely. But absolutely. But they're back in the legislature right now after being out for what, one one week? Yeah. <laughs> well, they couldn't have picked. You know, they 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 yelled at them for using a megaphone. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Not an appropriate place to use it. Well, it, it, the point was they were protesting. The, uh, the the use of fi you know firearms being so plentiful and so yep. on in their state, which has caused no amount of grief. That's right. And and they, I, you know that was an acceptable thing to protest against. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, absolutely. It was not unacceptable. So yeah. um, kind of like January sixth. What? It's kind of like January sixth. What do you mean? Nobody pooped in the hallways. So many shit went. Yeah, yeah. Nobody broke any windows or doors. Yeah, most of those were broken by the Secret Service agents. Nobody's. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Of course. Sent any cops to the hospital. Yeah. You really believe that, Phil? <laughs> no, well, I found out they shot one of the protesters and killed her, but uh, and you well, know, but well, she was going through a window. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, she, she, you know, they didn't probably didn't mean to kill her. But the, no, uh, they, they were shooting to, to to wound. They were trying for the leg. They were shooting to scare, is what oh, they were doing. Yeah, no, moves. I mean, come on, these are capital police. They're not your normal police. You know, no, these they're, are the guys that basically say the bathroom is over there. That's the biggest part of their job. Right, right. I mean, like red, cops? Red cops, like Phil was. <laughs> yeah, it's like what you used to do for the police. Oh department. yeah, rent the cops. Tell them. What what did you say? I beg to differ. The he was riding in the car. Right? Oh, no. Once protecting uh, Nancy Pelosi and those guys, they're they're trained just like the Secret Service. Oh yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're real cops. They're they're trained. I agree yeah. with you, Bert. Yeah. I mean, they smashed down several doors to get there, and then they smashed down that door to get in. They Too bad they didn't open guy. fire on these people. Are they trying? Are they trying to throw Diane Feinstein off the Judiciary Committee? She asked, didn't she just ask today to, uh, there, something came up and she asked to be removed temporarily from it. 
Well, it was because Having she health issues. no her yeah, but it it's a shingles. She's oh, that's dangerous at her age. Oh. Well, it's dangerous at any age. I mean, you can get the shingles shot. My mother never got that. According to CNN, a few months ago, Feinstein asked to be temporarily replaced on the judiciary amid some party pressure to resign from the Senate. I wonder they why they can't confirm any name. judges until she's gone or until she can be there. Yeah. What were you going to say, Phil? She is recovering from shingles. Wait, wait a minute. Let's hear Phil. We can laugh. Go ahead. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Whatever he I, says. I, said, I, I wonder why she wanted to be removed from the Judiciary Committee. She has a Jewish last name. You know. That's not bad, is it? She is Jewish, right? Oh, is she she is please Jewish. don't encourage him. Hello, Brian. <laughs> you thought the coast was clear tonight, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little happy here. Chuck Farnham did a couple things right after the interview. Mm -hmm. Come hopping up here mm -hmm. and and yeah, see what you so. got. <laughs> but don't you have to beat up on those old men photography thingies tonight? Uh, n next week. Oh, okay. Well, that's good because we got Chuck Farnham on again next week. So. Yeah, <laughs> and the week <laughs> after that. I'm glad. And who knows? We may have him for the week after that if we call the if I call him again, you know. Yeah. So, so uh, I think Vern might have. Did Vern see that? Did you see all the ham radios that the guy had in the background? I haven't watched that, that segment. Oh yeah, yet. you can watch it. He has a wall of ham radios. Oh yeah, he it. yeah Chuck oh, was really? in the in, into uh, in the ham radio. Yeah. yeah. I'll definitely have to watch it then. Yeah. 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 Well, you can see it. You know. Antique. And he had this antique TV, which I thought was very cool. I didn't see it. No? Oh. Yeah. Didn't notice any of that. But we had to yeah. change, we changed the background after the second interview. Oh. Uh, the reason being that he was using the uh, uh, Zoom equivalent of chroma key, right? Which isn't all that good, you yeah. know, because it, it, it kind of, you know, you, you lose Fades stuff. It out. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't key well so that was that was that um let's see here uh, uh what's his name uh trump what's his name yeah uh trump is uh be the greatest <laughs> president that god ever created <laughs> god doesn't nope, create not, god not. doesn't create presidents <laughs> by the way nope. uh, i thought you would enjoy that <laughs> Created yeah. this pen. Yeah, th thanks for sending it to him. And <laughs> yeah, thank you. And thanks thanks to Costco for supplying you with coffee. Thank you very much. Nine dollars, a whole big jug. What? Ten dollars. I got Folgers. I got like a big thing like that. Oh, really? Folgers. Oh. Well. <laughs> I, mean, well, I, send, I send you the good stuff, and you go back to drinking. Well, I finished it. It was yours. Was good. I have to say. Was no, that wait, 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 Hold on a second. Does anybody drink Folgers coffee, coffee anymore? Crystals? That's not oh. coffee. It's I, mouth I, and grown. No, you, what is that? No, no. He gets, got the type you, he gets the type that you brew, Phil. Have you heard of that? I thought Folgers were crystals. No, that were no. Folgers. Like, my mother used to drink Sanka. No, that was. Well, <laughs> do you want to? I mean, uh, uh, what is it? Is it Sanka? In in uh, Greece, um, yeah. the number one coffee is Sanka. Oh, uh, no. really? Yeah. It doesn't cause birth defects. I thought Phil's mother had one when they no. when she was pregnant. <laughs> they didn't have Sanka. Was it Sanka or was it? Wait a minute. Nescafe. Nescafe. Oh, that's that's, that's that what. That is the capital. Yeah, Nescafe. That's the they, they, I, they, you go into a into a place and you ask for you know coffee or whatever, and they give you Nescafe unless you actually true. ask for Greek coffee, in which they hand you a cup of the coffee with the grounds at the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. This is what, by the way, this is what uh, what uh, Tony's drinking: coffee with the grounds at the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he fresh brewed. He, he's he he doesn't know how to make it uh, with any he's other. He's got way. that look on his face where he's looking it up on the computer. What that means? I'm not looking at ham radios. And not anything. you. Well, Phil. You, you know, you're one person, right? Who's that? You're one person living in that house. Well, my brother, but he don't really drink coffee. He's more tea. Well, why don't you get yourself a, a pod machine? We ha my brother bought me the pod, Alex, and I used to tell this to him all the time. 
I like it, but the coffee gets cold fast. If I'm watching the Nick game and I go inside of the Yankee game, it's fast. already cold. It's, it you have out. a coffee warmer. They, they, you plug them into the water. Like I sit down and I'm the inning. It's like, oh, shit, it's cold. It I got to nuke it now. I get to do what I do. I don't finish a whole cup of coffee every night, so I put it in the refrigerator and I warm it up the next day in the microwave. Well, I sometimes make iced coffee with my leftover coffee. That's what you I know, do. No, Alex, uh, Tony has these pods under his bed. And uh, yeah, right. Get a when movie about asleep. it. Yeah. Right. What was it? The Pod People. You know, Tony oh, sends you all this it. nice stuff. Have you ever sent him anything? No. Uh, yeah, I did actually. <laughs> what? He said, "Oh, you got to see what he sent me—a sales book, Alan Alex. If you would have read this thing, it's a dry sales stuff. book." Yes, the guy said, Alex, I'm going to put never on anything off discount. And I went against the grain and did a 10% sale, and I had my most sales. I said, the guy's wrong. I said, how can you not run a sale? Doesn't everybody run sales? No. He, he says some carpet samples to Tony. Uh, not, right. yet. <laughs> not yet. Not <laughs> yet. Well, well, he figures something. if he sends him enough of them, he can carpet his floor. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I got wood. Uh, oh, Charlie needs to correct something, and I yeah. wasn't even on the first half hour. <laughs> the, the Tony uh, said said that uh, he had to. Uh, he didn't like pod coffee because it cools off too fast. I hate to tell you, but the laws of physics don't allow pod coffee to cool off any faster than any other kind of coffee. Is that true? You just cold. Hey, this guy is an astrophysicist, <laughs> okay? Good. It's not like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Charlie, even the one on, on the stove, though? I always thought the coffee on the stove always would stay hot. Although, it, it, although an astrophysicist might know what a cup of coffee temperature is near Pluto also, right? <laughs> hey, Tony, if you leave the stove on and you leave the coffee on the stove, <laughs> it'll stay hot. Stove. And there goes the pot. <laughs> I have to be calling Bezos for another pot at the end of the week. Why is the ace of spade? I got to get a new one. Throw it out. Usually, if you use most coffee makers, you know, you make the coffee and then it's brewed and then right. that's it, you know. Well, Pour it in the cup and that's yeah. when it starts cooling off. And, and, and that's why, cool. that's why the, uh, the what do you call it, the uh, Keurig is such a good idea is because yeah. especially yeah. like you, you only want to make one cup. It makes a perfect yeah. one cup. Whereas one cup with the time. way you're doing it, you have to make many cups. So you're going to have really cold coffee. Yeah, yeah. It's like sometimes it's only to measure. My curry at the store just started to give it up today. Really? So, uh, does anybody have a suggestion for like a, a better curry? Okay, the current I have a current Cuisinart that's for, six Forget it. I've, I've done a lot of reading on this. The know. current Keurig that I have is the best. Which oh, one's that? The, 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 well, it's kind of, I'd say it was the newest one, but I've had it about six, eight months. It's, uh, it's a, uh, it, they just refined it and changed a lot of the way in which it works. And uh, it, uh, for instance, when you turn it on, it immediately starts brewing the coffee. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to wait to warm up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, th th that's part of it, and the other part of it is is that it just it just seems to it has more uh, punctures in the top to more evenly distribute the coffee in the pod. It's it, they just improved completely on their model, as it were, and it was, it's very good. It's very okay. good. Yeah, I can I can so, grow yeah, a cup of coffee, and they're Phil, cheap. They're cheap. They're you go to Phil, Costco. I can about turn on my bucks. coffee maker and in thirty seconds have a cup of coffee. So you got to wait thirty seconds. What do you yeah. mean thirty? Yeah. Wait that long? <laughs> well, I don't leave it on all the time. It's a it's a Cuisinart. The thing works good. Yeah, I, Alex it might be better. So maybe you ought to buy his. Hey, listen, I'm really cold. happy with it. You know. And, you know, uh, Send, send Phil one and uh, you know and charge him. Send Phil time. one. Why should I send Phil a coffee maker? Oh, I uh, know. Alan will do it. Just tell him what model you got. <laughs> Are you crazy? No, I'm not, I'm and not I'm not going to send one to Tony. That's for goddamn sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sending one to either oh, one of them. You know. <laughs> you know they actually make. They actually make cup of cup, you know, your Keurigs that make one cup at a time. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's what I said. It's better for somebody like Tony or me or even Marjorie yeah. and I. She she has some coffee in the morning. And then when I get up, I make myself some. But we usually don't make more than a cup at a time. 
Right. Whereas if we made like one, a carafe worth or whatever, you know, you're never going to use all that up and the coffee gets wasted. I, I, I said, I'll save it for some ice coffee. My mother used to make me make the coffee on the stove. She never wanted to put a little liquor in the coffee. You'll get wasted. Not to oh. add the liquor. You're right. I use a French press. Hmm? A French press where you put the grounds in and the hot water. Still, and it's put... making too much coffee. I mean, yeah. I the thing coffee. that's good about the Keurig is it, it does. Even if you have the massive one, it just makes one cup at a time. You don't right. have cold coffee coffee sitting around getting cold. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, you're gonna the whole the whole cold thing. What the, the whole the whole cold thing depends on the cup you pour it in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah if you I, I have I have a Starbucks one that's a double insulated thing, and that thing stays hot forever. Yeah. I've and, got those and, Yeti and, ones. And when you make it, do you make it with a Keurig? No, oh. I, I have a coffee pot thingy, my Yeah, but they, no, I, they... I, I make I make like I make like. Like four, like three, like three days worth when I drive to Lodi. So I pour it in the, you know, after that, then I use it, pour it in the big cup and I'm good for that day. And then I have another cup for the next day already made. Yeah. So you got a whole have a Mr. Coffee. In your coffee McLaren, maker. there's a coffee cup holder. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this use is the that. only show you're going to get on, on, on YouTube right now. Okay. That uh, is talking about how to make coffee. It's important. When I was working, and, and watch it, they will, they will demonetize me. <laughs> That's right. uh, let me tell you about this. This is this, this ready for my de latest demonetization story. Oh, they demonetized good. two shows of mine recently, one right after the other. Show number one was the Monday show. Wow, Charlie, you're on there. What's to demonetize on that show? I don't know. Maybe Mandy was too sexy. <laughs> and number two was the show that Marjorie and I did that was eight minutes long out at the oh, park. Oh, the one at the park? And we I had kissing. We didn't say, yeah. we, yes, we kissed. That was yeah. it. Really? So I protested it, and of course they then reversed it. But why did those things get demonetized? <laughs> what was there in those shows? That could have possibly caused it. You know, you must be on the so, I, I, them, so you know what that that would be a cause. We talked a little. Give you this a, is a, what? This what? is a good Wait. segue into the NPR pulling off a of Twitter because. Yeah. Uh, 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 do you know? Twitter did you notice? A, did you notice that Brian was talking? No. <laughs> No, uh, Alex, Alex, just to give you a good tip is uh, today's Mandy's birthday, so you better say happy birthday to oh, her. Oh, happy baby. birthday to Mandy? Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Bring her on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, we're not going to bring her on. I don't want to have to expose her to you human beings. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Oh, let me see. He already wants to punch me. She gets up to go to work early every morning. Her? Okay, uh, let's see here. Mandy. Let's see, Mandy Mills O'Brien. There she is. Okay, yeah. happy birthday, Mandy. Wish a happy birthday, Mandy. A happy birthday. Yeah. What? What? Happy birthday. Happy birthday from the night was on birthday. May 12th. No, I was April. Wait a minute. Roll. Hold on a second. I always do this. You old bag. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Yes. Really huh? nice. yes. 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 Please, <laughs> please put it. Please put it. it oh, stop it! Do You're encouraging me now. She might not understand the humor. Yeah, no, she true. will. She will. She will. She just want to appreciate it. I wonder how old she is. Uh, she's about fifty-seven, is it? Like has that. the same last think. name as Marjorie. Uh, a great-looking fifty-seven-year-old, yeah. by the way. You know, well, an exercise class. And then I said, done. "We all love you." Right. Okay. You say her last name is the same as Mar Marjorie's last name? Hmm? No. So no, it's O'Brien. Oh, I thought it was Mills O'Brien. No, Mills no. Miller is Marjorie's oh. name. Oh, okay. yes, Marjorie Miller. Phil's having trouble remembering again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Phil's having have, he has trouble with everything. Ah, you did put it awesome, awesome, good things. Did you see? Did you <laughs> see it there? Okay. Yeah, I did. <laughs> she'll uh, she'll well. take it as a joke. She has a yeah. sense of humor, you know, like that. It, that did it. Okay. All right.
So happy, if, and if you're watching it all, you watch this show, and I doubt it, Mandy, happy birthday from... No, she knows Tuesday feels on, so she won't watch from, it. From, the, from people who call on Monday. She's my, got and, her boxing gloves on right now, waiting for <laughs> Phil to knock on the door. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, I was trying to make a segue into uh, the NPR Twitter uh, I issue uh, where you were talking uh, about getting demonetized. And I said that uh, NPR is pulling off of Twitter uh, because I guess uh, but I'm not, we're not on Twitter. Huh? We're not on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, they were. And uh, their account was listed as a government um, uh, uh like a government show. You're, you're not hearing what Alex is saying, Phil. He Phil. said they're not on Twitter. They're not on they're, Twitter. They're, 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 they were. No, I'm saying it, 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 we're, it, we're not even talking about Twitter, Phil. No, we were talking about being demonetized. On I, YouTube. Right. And and I was saying that's, oh, a good segue to go over to this topic. But uh, oh, I uh, didn't hear anything about NPR. Or is it is it NPR? You're yes, and NPR's account was listed as a government uh, uh, information account. Uh, it was it was a negative thing that they were listed as. And uh, it's not, it's so not they, account. they approached Twitter and said, this is not the right thing. And they listed it as government paid account. And so they said that they're pulling they're pulling off of uh, Twitter. Yeah, well, I would pull off. I'm, I, I don't even I, I have a Twitter account, but I never use it. Yeah. You know? I, I dropped my Twitter account when they dropped. Uh, I think that some of my stuff may go out over Twitter because I think once I said, you know, if I do something on Facebook, throw it over on Twitter as well at the same time. Oh. But, I deleted my again? Twitter account. I deleted my Twitter account when Elon Musk bought him. Oh, I, I deleted it when they threw Trump off. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't. I know. I you know. Uh, well, I don't. I don't hate Musk as much as you do. You know. <laughs> I do. Oh, okay. Well, then, uh, you know. Um, yeah. You know, there are too many people for me to be pissed at. I gotta, I gotta limit them to the really good ones. I think they ought to strap Trump into one of uh, uh, the new rockets for SpaceX. Test it out. If it's a success, he goes up in space. If not, oh well. No, oh, William Shatner went up. Why not Trump? That's right. With all Trump's money, he should be able to afford to get uh, uh, SpaceX to build him his own spacecraft. Yeah. Now, here's a story of the day, actually, is that Trump is suing Michael Cohen for $500 million. For what? Breach of... Oh, uh, I think uh, because he just sues people to keep them busy, you know? Uh, I don't think he has much of a case here. Sort of fiduciary breach or... Well, he says that he signed uh, uh, confidentiality agreements and things like that. But that the point is, when you're uh, huh? Uh, the, can that be upheld when you're under oath and subpoena? No, it can't be. You know, so I mean, it's just Trump trying to keep Cone busy. You know, and I'm sure Cone's having a good day laughing at it because I mean, let's be honest, five hundred million from. Uh, from oh. Cohn, uh, from Michael oh. Cohn. Uh, how much money do you figure Michael Cohn has? 72 cents. Probably. Yeah, he's yeah. But his father-in-law is very wealthy. Doesn't matter. He can't be sued. I know, but that's that's how he's, no, you know. No, but no, famous. but he, he, none of, he, he, all, you know, I mean, he can sue him for whatever he wants to. He could win, and he's never going to see it. So what's he doing it for? You know, if you wanted to do it, truthfully, do it for a reasonable amount yeah. that it looks like Michael uh, um, uh, 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 Cohen, Cohen could pay, you know, could afford to pay. It's like that Gleneth Paltrow thing where she sued, she countersued for a dollar. Yeah, because, she she, yeah, yeah. And, and and her legal expenses. And her, they want her legal expenses, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the uh, I I wouldn't take ski lessons from her though. No, not a good idea. Well, no, I wouldn't take a ski lessons from the guy who hit her. <laughs> okay, yeah. you know. Well, that guy's an old fart. He's like seventy-five. What'd you say? Nothing. <laughs> was that? Was that wait, a minute, wait a minute. That was an age joke, wasn't it? Yeah, he put his foot in it. It was an age joke. It was an age joke. I, I, if they're listening, don't don't demonetize them for that. 
An a- that age joke? Yeah, did did, uh, did you see where Alvin Bragg is suing Jim Jordan, telling him to leave his keep his nose out of uh, local business? And yeah. he he'll, he easily win that one because yeah. because the the government um, has no business uh, in interfering in states' business, states uh, federal government, f- federal yeah. government. Uh, and you know what is fun? What's funny is the Republicans, the first one to tell you. Oh, you know, uh, there's states' rights. You know, we should not impinge on states' rights. And then a guy like Jordan tries to say, we're subpoenaing, you know, Bragg. And that judge in western Texas is trying to uh, uh, get rid of the FDA approval of that one drug nationwide. Yeah, but but that's a different that's a different case altogether. Well, it's states' you, rights. No, sure. I don't know if it is states' rights. I think I think you cannot, you should not be able to tell a state what to do. Okay, uh-huh. at least that's. You ask any Republican, states' rights is is supposedly one of the things they they always quote. You know, on this on this new uh, thing on abortion, the overturn of Roe versus Wade. Uh, it's now gone back to the states, and it's up to the state to decide. Yeah, but, uh, but, but what's happening is because of what this judge did, who's a federal judge, I believe, yes. is that he negated the whole thing with the FDA approving the morning after pill. And so that means that all states, after a certain date, cannot sell that pill. Saturday. So yeah, what, sure. you talk about interfering in states' rights, that's exactly <laughs> what he's doing. And that's why the states that that still do abortions are stockpiling the drug. Yeah, New York is stockpiling it. So is California. Illinois and, and California. And going to make it available to anybody who needs it. Yep. Yeah. That Seinfeld episode where uh, Elaine was deciding well, whether someone sponges. was sponge worthy. Those were sponges, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, but she was stockpiling the sponges. <laughs> they stopped making the sponge at a certain point because they found that it could cause problems, you know. Yeah. I never watched but, that. But but the thing is, it, it was I, it was, was um, you know, it's terrible what happened in, with that the judge in Texas, and he should not be able to affect the entire country. And uh, I'm sure most states are going to refuse to, you know, a lot of states are going to refuse to go along with it, and just well, say the Justice, the Justice Department is has fi- asked for a TRO mm-hmm. to to negate his ruling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, these people who are judges who think they can then impose their morality on people rather than just do what they got to do, and that's rule on cases. You know, isn't it interesting how activist judges Hmm? are always Democrats, according to Republicans? Really? Isn't this an activist judge? This guy is, I think. Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks, yeah. no question about it. Isn't he a Trump appointee? Yeah. Yes. There are those yes. people that honestly believe now that the Republicans are in a lot of trouble, that they have so alienated a large portion of this country between mm-hmm. their stances on abortion and going along with the, the ban of Roe v. Wade and uh, a lot of the stuff, a lot of little antics they've been doing that they consider to be flying in the face of democracy that the republicans are going to have a pretty hard time of it in the next couple of years that they've they've painted themselves into a very bad corner that quite frankly they can't get themselves out of you know and you got assholes like jim jordan and so on uh leading the march on all this stuff and marjorie trash can green yeah yeah of course of course, Marjorie Green, who, by the way, owes two hundred and fifty dollars to the city of New York for violating a noise ordinance, right, yeah. with a bullhorn that she didn't have her permit. Well, for. she didn't. She didn't have permission because it was a, she was. Yes, she was doing something political, but if you do that, you still have to get like a permit. Yeah, yeah. that's what New York to do says. that sort of thing. So they they find her two hundred and fifty thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, which she right. says she's not going to pay. Yep. Well, that's right. abiding the law, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Well, she's a Republican. They're above the law. Huh? She's a Republican. They're above the yeah. law. Yeah, I guess so. You know, 
But I mean, it's 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 just amazing to me that these people who who have over and over again talked about states' rights and they talk about the Constitution and blah 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 are violating all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So I mean, I don't understand it. I don't understand. It doesn't make me it doesn't make any sense to me. Um. So what else is new? What else is new? Uh, we found out the shooter in our in our mass shooting that we had here. Oh yeah, you had a mass a shooting down there, didn't you? He bought an AR-15 on April the fourth. Really? Yeah, shooting. yeah. 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 Illegally oh, bought this was the on one in the April bank. The this was the one yes. in the bank. It, yeah. yeah. Yes. In, Lu in Louisville, right? Yes. And yeah. the reason that that police officer was shot was because the windows were tinted a certain way so that they could not see into the bank lobby. And, and so this guy was waiting for the cops after he had shot the bank employees. He was waiting for the cops to come to the bank so mm -hmm. that he could ambush them. What's interesting, yeah. what's interesting about this guy is his, his parents have been apologizing profusely to the public for what he did. Uh, and in their apologies said, we had no idea he had any guns. We didn't think he had any. And they were right in that assumption because he had only bought it a few days earlier. Yep. Without yeah. any background checks, bank? what? He worked at that bank. I think yeah. he at one time worked oh, at the bank. The no, he had, he was an employee of the bank at the time of the shooting. Yes. He had worked for them for over a year, and he interned there three times before he became a permanent employee. Mm -hmm. And he had a master's in finance. What was his problem? I thought he was twenty-two years old. He problem, was Republican. He was twenty-five. No, he, he, had, he had, his mom said he suffered from depression, but she didn't think that he would do anything. And she called the police after he left the house, and she, they warned him, said that I think he's going to the bank right now. And yeah. She know he had a gun? Yeah, she, she said point? she didn't think that he had guns, but, yeah. She was worried that he was going to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Did they, did they let him go? I thought that he got fired. Did they let him go? No. 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 He's dead. No. That was a rumor. Yeah, no, yeah. That's a All form right, of now. that's a form of letting you go. Yeah, he had a future in he had a future in floor covering sales. Yeah. That police officer who was shot in the head. Yeah. What was the only, This was only his fourth tour. He was on his fourth tour. Yeah, when this guy out. Out. He was a rookie. Uh, he was a rookie. Days. He had just he had just graduated from the academy and was sworn in the week before. Do you know yeah. what you know what's happening now that I notice in the news and they're showing it a lot using the body cams and so on is they try and show now how brave these cops really are because of after the thing in Uvalde in which everybody cowered in the hallway most of these people now go well we're not going to get caught that way. Okay. Well, the guy that took him down was his training officer one who got shot in the head it was his training officer he was with his training officer when they came to the bank and he was shot and the training officer took out the shooter wow. with okay. another ar-15 he, he got he got shot in the head is he alive still or did he no. pass away he's in, he's in serious oh. but stable condition oh, oh really oh yeah. okay you know what i don't know how many you've seen this but the other night jeremy renner was on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Oh. Three months after he got run over by his snowplow. He's amazing, isn't he? No, it's just amazing how well he is. He walked onto the set using a cane, and at some point he wow. didn't, wasn't even mm -hmm. using the cane. I saw him get interviewed, I think it was 60 Minutes. Well, no, it wasn't 60 Minutes. It was uh, Diane, it was another so one. Di Diane it Sawyer. Diane Sawyer, that's what it was. It was at ABC. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and that was an excellent interview. I, I was, I had no idea that Jeremy Reamer was such a good guy. Jeremy Reamer, whatever. Renner, Renner. Renner. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he, you know, but it wasn't. It, it, what it was is that it's just amazing how well he has done in three months, yeah. and I think part of that had to do with the fact, and he said it, none of his vertebrae were broken. None of his organs were impacted except for his liver, which got in, it got a his lung. Uh, lung. No, no liver. No, they said he had a collapsed lung. He too. had a collapsed lung, but he he didn't have. But they were able to get that going, and you can inflate yeah. that easily. But it was like a spiraling bone that fell off his leg. I think and it went and hit his liver. 
And that's yeah. the only internal injury that he had. He didn't have any brain injuries. His eye fell out of its socket. They put that oh, back yeah. in. They did a whole bunch of work putting his face back together. I hate when that happens. Yeah. He said he could actually see the, the eye with his other eye. Oh, God. You know, he had his oh, eye on. Yeah. My and, grandmother had a glass eye. She had a glass eye. She lost her eye from cancer. She had a glass oh, eye. Oh, oh. I, well, you know, but isn't it amazing that after a month, um, three months. Three this months, guy yeah. is up and about. It's just, I think, incredible. He, he has an, a tremendous will uh, to uh, to heal and to uh, and to fight. Well, also, uh, I think he was oddly enough very lucky. Yeah, he well, said he was very lucky. He said fourteen tons that machine. Oh and, and, yeah. And, yeah, but he and didn't. What happened was it he wasn't the he, wheels that he, ran no, over. He didn't get the full weight of the fourteen yeah. tons though, because yeah. he got the what the weight of the of the of the, of the track. Right, and the, the track, track uh, probably had a lot of give in it. Yeah, but yeah. he was on uh, cement or blacktop. No, he wasn't. He was on snow. No, he, he was would... on. He was on snow. No. Yes, snow? he was. Yes, no. absolutely. Yeah, he was, it was a snow plow. It was a snow plow. It he was, was snow in plow, snow. but he was on his driveway. And no, when he it wasn't ran in. Over his, him. He wasn't even in his no. driveway, Phil. He was on the. He was trying to help road. somebody no. else. I, I saw. I saw the video of what he happened. He was down the road. He was well, down the road on, from his home. On, he was on roadbed. There was no it, it, the it, snow well, was already what, gone. What I saw was there was snow there. But anyway, what, I heard the interview. Be man, that as it may, uh, it it uh, he's just very lucky that he had everything going for him in that situation. This cop is not going to be that lucky if he got shot in the head. Well, you know, a lot of times if you get shot in the head, it goes around the. Uh, the, the the round doesn't necessarily penetrate into the brain; it just goes around the edge. Uh, uh, that, he got shot in the head with an AR, Phil. Yeah, well, that's ARs that's, don't tend to like skate around the skin around the brain. Depends on how it hit him, you know. Mm -hmm. Anything's possible. And an AR is just a carbine, you know, twenty-two caliber, basically. I know what it is. Yeah. I just don't think it's a weapon of war. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. And wait a minute. Hold on a second. Jeff is talking. When Jeff talks, we listen because he very <laughs> seldom talks. Yeah, fun. Go I ahead. said I don't think any any of you guys have enough experience in neurosurgery to to make a good decision for this guy at this point. Which guy? The guy that got shot or the police guy officer. The guy who got shot. Yeah, yeah. they'll ask me later. <laughs> <laughs> God, bed, Phil. <laughs> well, what's well, interesting, they, they interviewed the chief, the, the chief of medicine at the ER in the hospital where mm -hmm. everybody was taken. And the guy said what was interesting or what was what was traumatic is that there was another shooting incident while this other one was going on in somewhere else in the city. Jeez. Well, you know what happens is Marjorie comes to me and goes, Oh, did you hear about the shooting today? Isn't it terrible? What the hell's going on? And I say, uh, 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 I'll tell you what's going on. I said, the same thing that went on yesterday and the day before and the day before that. You know, there's a shooting every day in this country, a mass shooting in this country every day. Well, there's a traffic accident every day, too. Phil, every don't, minute. don't, we're not talking about traffic well, accidents. More people right die now. in traffic accidents. That than doesn't, in, uh, uh, and 60% uh, of those are suicides. Automobiles are not designed to kill people. And by though, the way, 60% are not suicides, Phil. Yeah. Well, find me the statistic. Okay. I, I know where it is. You know uh, where it is. Huh? Go to gun, there's a, there's a site I that it's the CDC. Took. Last night, ah, the CDC's full of shit. They can't even get COVID right. <laughs> Go to gunviolencearchive.com. Okay. Well, have you found it? Uh, let me see. Gun Violence Archive, huh? Yeah. Uh, it won't let me log on to it with my uh, VPN running. So, but you can get on it. I was on it last night. I turned the VPN off. The trouble is I'll lose the show. Suicides, okay, right here, uh, let me press the thing. It says, suicides by gun accounted for six out of every 10 firearm deaths in 2010. Uh, just over oh, wait, half of wait them. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. When? Well, I went to his site. 
I, but it's the same statistic. No, no, now. it can't be the same statistic. The re, you probably saw that statistic too. No, and no, the fact it, is that is, ten years ago, twelve years ago, thirteen years ago, things weren't this, as bad as they is, are now. This is the one that your buddy Alan Ween said to go to. Yeah, well, I said CDC, uh, and that's and that's accurate. Uh, 2019 or 2020 uh, information, mm -hmm. and it's the same statistic: six out of ten are suicides. Yeah, but you probably don't have six out of ten people using AR-15s to commit suicide. No, no. gun deaths, and a very few, very few uh, of these shootings are done with an AR-15. Wait a minute, hold on a second. The Echo, of mass just shootings hold on a today. second. Echo, how many gun deaths are from weapons. suicide every year? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, twenty-five thousand every year. Twenty-five thousand. Okay. Echo, what percentage of gun deaths is caused by suicide? Sorry, I don't know that one. I just know that one. Re reword it. The way you, it, it doesn't make sense the way you asked Echo. What am I supposed to ask? I, I don't know. I don't ask Echo. Anything. <laughs> Does that make sense then? But, but ask, e ask I, Echo I to how many. Thing. Okay. Ask, e ask Echo, uh, Gecko, Gecko, whatever. Ask, ask <laughs> if. Um, how, what percentage of uh, suicides are done with guns? Or no, or... no, 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 no. No, we don't. That's not no. That. <laughs> Echo, Echo. What percentage of gun deaths Sorry, is? I don't know that one. Echo. What percentage of gun deaths is as a result of suicide? Sorry, I don't know that one. Doesn't know that one. Okay. I got a 2020 from the CDC. Uh, I haven't read it all the way, but let me say, uh, I'll just give you the first paragraph. Firearm deaths continue to be public uh, to be a significant and growing public health problem. Mm -hmm. In 2020, 79% of all homicides and 53% of all suicides involve firearms. Uh, from 53, 50, 53, uh, that didn't say that, uh, so it still doesn't say how many are suicides. Let me say something to you, Phil. Said 53%. Phil, Phil, Phil. Phil. If people commit suicide, well, wait a minute, hold for... on a second, listen to me. Mm -hmm. if, if, let's say 60% of people who commit suicide do so with a gun. Correct. If they weren't able to get a gun, would there be less suicides? No. No. Okay, are you sure of that, Phil? Yeah. Why are you sure of that? I think the 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 availability of a, of a firearm makes suicide easier. Yeah, that's correct. And you don't think taking a pill, uh, the availability of cyanide would make it just as easy? I, I don't what know. What availability you get cyanide, of cyanide? I don't know where you get cyanide pills, Bill. Where do you? Yeah, buy, where, do you Depot. where do you? Where do you? You go to Home Depot. Depot. Yeah, Home, Home Depot. Depot. Wait a, a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> we have an expert here who <laughs> works. <laughs> who works at? Uh, is it Home Depot? Yeah, burn. It's on aisle okay. six. Do you sell? Do you sell cyanide there? No, no. But they sell other stuff, rat poison and shit like that. You know something, Phil. All I'm saying is, if the guns weren't available, you wouldn't have people committing suicide with a gun. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go five feet away and I'll show you an AR-15. Oh, I, I thought you were going to go five feet away, get a gun, and blow your brains out just to prove it to us. You might get demonetized, but maybe not since it's uh, filmed. You, you know, if you show a gun... <laughs> that, maybe if you go off the roof, though. <laughs> hey, do you think that showing a gun uh, would get you demonetized? Showing a gun? No, if you shot and killed yourself with a gun, he would oh, definitely that would, not... That, that would be a problem, but... Uh, that would no, be no, just for you. He, would, he wouldn't get demonetized because it was you. No, it, it would be a snuff film. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Now yeah, look up this statistic, though, Phil, and find out how many people shoot include. themselves with an AR-15. Yeah, I don't think any. I think you, it's pretty hard to do, isn't it? I guess the numbers the numbers would be low, Vern. It's a it's a the gun is. Uh, 30, 30 inches. Four inches or 30 yeah, it's a weapon inches. of war. That's my whole point. It's the weapon of war. It has no business on the street. It, you right. could barely hunt uh, chipmunks with it. Well, I got a so, chipmunk. So why do you need it, Bill? So why so are people using those those particular guns to shoot deer? 
They don't use that to shoot. No, it's not powerful enough. Um, and what did they use it for? A 30-odd six, 30-odd Kill people. That's what it was developed for. Uh-huh. Yep. It was developed for a wartime weapon, wasn't it, Phil? <clears throat> well, maybe they used them in uh, something similar in Vietnam. You know, but maybe they, 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 it's very close. The guy that developed it, his name was Stone or something. Was his Stoner, last. yeah. Yep. Uh, he, wor- he he did it with Armalite Corporation. That's what AR stands for. Yeah, okay, but who cares about all that stuff? We're talking about murders and stuff, so. Mm. Another insane night, right, Brian? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think it's interesting that Alexa, a while ago, said that 25,000 deaths a year from uh, gun violence. We're already at 11,700, and we're in April. Mm. That's number you know, one. I, I, I would say, Vern, probably the majority of people that use a gun, that have access to it, that use the gun to kill themselves, it was usually a pistol or a revolver. Yeah. It's a lot smaller. You can just put it in your head. It's not this big, long gun. It's hey, like it's like it's try, trying to use a shotgun to kill yourself. Hey, Alan, would you demonstrate? Sure, uh, come on over. <laughs> I got a wide-angle lens, Phil. I can watch it here. You can, we can, we can, we can, I'll, let you, I'll let you pick one of three or four different ammo rounds, whichever one you want going through your brain first. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. There's a hollow cavity there. Uh, what are you, what are you doing? What are you getting? Don't, 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 don't put a gun on this show. This, this is a, this is a round from a, uh, this is a two, two, three. Or now you five, just got five. demonetized. No, yep, I'll do it. This is around from a uh, uh, from a, um, a AR-15. Hmm. Okay, we'll put it in the gun, put it to your head, and let's see if it works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look who's That's there! Like, Look who's there! Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. She's like a cat. She, I told you she's like a cat. Turn the camera on. She'll eventually. I love the little she'll hand thing eventually. On the side. But, uh, yeah. Hi. How you doing, Adrian? Hey. See? Did you re- see the Brian video he put up the other day of Adrian? That was a great mm-hmm. video. I got to go look at it. What is it of, Brian? Yeah, Brian. Re- Phil, what is it of? Uh, it was of uh, your daughter uh, doing uh, uh, throwing a basketball, I think. Oh, yeah. We're, yeah, we're playing basketball over the weekend. Yeah, it had music. It was, uh, yeah. it was really, really well done. Yeah, so she's got to got to get a scholarship somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, she's going to get a lot of them. Yeah, send send Alex that video. I thought it was excellent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, oh. let me see here. Oh, we're slow, almost running out of time here. Almost Maria, doesn't. don't try to get on. I'm not going to answer your trying to get on. Who? Maria it says Maria Norway. Yeah, like that's yeah, a real Norway. name. What? Norway. Yeah. Sounds bogus to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you know. Well, well how was you got? Did you see the Rube and Rube at uh, the hearth? Yeah. Yeah. How's that? It was uh, good. I enjoyed it. Uh, Alan yeah. was there. Ray was there. And uh, did you tell him about calling the show? Did you tell him to call Alex? Yeah, I did. Good. Yeah. Bill actually took a picture of him on stage like six years ago, blew it up and gave it to him ahead of time, and the guy used it in his show and they mentioned Bill. Burn it. Favorite. They burn it. Good shot. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so, um, um, yeah, uh, let me see. Come here. with us, Brian. Yeah, it's April Fool's Day, so I didn't trust you guys. <laughs> yeah, and he's got better things to do than hang out with you guys. It was a Saturday night, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was Saturday yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. There, they, there was a bigger room that they put us in. Uh, not oh, really? that they put uh, Larry in. Huh? Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? What, what do you mean, bigger room? Uh, this, this is a pub called the Hearth. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Gary Street, in the avenues in San Francisco, yeah, by Eleventh Avenue. Mm-hmm. And uh, when Larry did his uh, his show, uh, he was doing a recording, I guess, for a record. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Brian and I and uh, some others went, and uh, and 
went to that one, and it was in a very small area uh, of of the bar. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he might maybe was on a three or four foot square platform. Mm -hmm. And now for uh, Ruben, they moved him into the pool room, and uh, it was a much bigger room. They had about 60 people in there. Oh, yeah. the other side? The other side. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. hey, listen, uh, the theme is playing. I don't know. Can you hear the theme? I, I always no. thought you could. No, we can't. You can't hear it. No, we true. trust you. We I'm trust you. I'm going to figure out why you can't hear it. But anyway, <laughs> and that's it for tonight. Boy. Oh, thank you so much. Jeff, thank you for being sure. here tonight. There he is. Uh, he's back home again in Connecticut. I know why they can't hear the theme. Why? Uh, if you play it through that that board uh, where you have the special effects, mm -hmm. uh, then, it, then it will play on this. But uh, it's the mix minus. Uh, well, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> Hey, thank you all. Thank you to Jeff. Thank you, uh, Charlie. Always a pleasure to see you here. Uh, and uh, 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 Alan, nice having you here once again. Brian Nunn, always a pleasure. Phil, uh, Tony, <laughs> nice mm. having you here. And of course, very nice to have Adrian join us tonight. Thanks for being with us tonight, Adrian. <laughs> There she goes. She waves goodbye as well. Hey, I'm. That's it. Everybody, wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye at you. Okay. There we go. There they go, folks. That's our. Uh, let's see here. There they go. That's our citizen panel. Uh, let me. Uh, let me just uh, uh, turn them all off and uh, get ready to let our, our good friend join us tonight. And that is. Uh, um, uh, uh, Jack Bishop next over most of the same gabnet. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>